brought across the Atlantic from cities in England such as London and Manchester to the United States, rave culture has slowly etched its way into the club and dark recesses of major metropolitan cities like New York and Chicago. But for living on the West Coast, this is definitely no secret. For on any given quick stroll down the streets of either San Francisco or Los Angeles, we a unique subculture which has ultimately been embraced as part of the home. And as we will see, when Los Angeles grabs a hold of something, it's so quick to let go. The underground scene is dead, some might say. Try telling that to the millions of young urban dwellers of Los Angeles and you will get quite a different response. For although it may have taken refuge along the surface of the city streets, what is and will always be far from deceased. You can find it with the young people of LA and the many different aspects of their lifestyle. And while the clothes they wear may play an urban underground rave scene, the music comes first. Record stores catering solely to the underground can be found selling a wide left hip-hop, techno, deep house, and Latin grooves. With an intense turnover rate in tracks, the variety of music is as fast-paced as the music itself, moving upward 160 beats per minute. This very rapidly changing subculture even has its own voice in the form of a month magazine publication known as Herb. Raymond Roker, editor of Herb Magazine, explains his views on the strengths and progressions of rave culture. Well, I mean, I, I started to go into clubs like, you know, everybody else did. As far as uh, back then, it wasn't really like going to rave. It was uh, the clubs that just started to break off the mainstream, you know, path. And uh, I started a club like OAP. And uh, it was a party, basically. It was a lot more mixed back then. There was a lot more intermingling of, of like, the culture. As far as positivity and continuing the scene, it's going to take people's attitudes to be, first of all, non-apathetic. People have to realize their own power. And then, you know, we can all party in unison. Stuff, and there's going to be ups and downs, but I think that's the only way it'll, it'll, it'll continue on instead of uh, the bickering about, uh, you know, what's old, what's new school, who was there in the beginning, who wasn't. You know, really just need to realize that there are things in this world that we need to react to and change and make better. And uh, if, you know, there's a lot of power in, in the youth culture. <laughs> While so far we have seen a glimpse of underground rave culture during the day, its favorite place to be is definitely the night.
taste relentless, and for some, in order to keep up with the beat, illegal substances are often consumed. With ecstasy providing a tactile intimacy, speed helping to whip up the tempo, the ambush of sound, fury, and blaring samples combine to create an apocalyptic catacomb of hard rig. Jason Bentley, DJ and assistant editor of Herb Magazine, gives his views on the urban rave culture. One thing about raves is a lot of young people and a lot of young energy. And so you say to yourself, okay, we have a lot, a lot of young people who have ideas and are growing up in this world and are part of our society and are really the future. And they're all coming together and they've got this idea of rave. So what can we do with that? Can we be conscious ravers? Can we do something productive with this energy? And one of the most important things about it, one of the most important problems is that it's not instructional, not lyrical, it's not didactic. It's not like folk songs of the 60s where you could be told to do something or have an attitude. It's like this strange amorphous uh, attitude instead. You know, it's not spelled out. And so I think if anything, what needs to be done is it needs to be linked to a message. I think the rave environment is very psychedelic and you don't necessarily have to be on just to appreciate that but i imagine it helps if you are it enhances things because drugs are sensory enhancements and so if you're seeing or hearing loud odd things that are disorienting and leading weird stuff you're going to react to it strangely and it might be somewhat enjoyable so um I, I don't think that rave needs to be pegged with a, a kind of a drug face that you can't rave without being on drugs. I think that's ridiculous. I really uh, am defensive on that point also in that I think drugs are in our society very prevalent. Drugs are the answer everywhere. I mean, you know, we're constantly bombarded by uh, commercials that are saying drugs are the answer no matter what drug. However, many do see drugs as an integrated part of raves, the objective being to have the wildest experience possible. The promoter Tommy G gives his insights on drugs and the rave culture. The faster drugs and the faster music is the key thing. Everything's got a lot faster. What I like to see at the rave is just what happens. Chaos. Everyone loves. It's great. What I think for the future of the raves I don't think drugs will have anything to do with it. It's not that drugs, it's, it's just what people feel. 